Hey, how's it going everyone? Can I say you here? Welcome back to another episode of Collector's Zone Hall. It is uh, the 9th of June and uh, once again we've got a load more comics and goodies to show you all and uh, yeah, let's get into it. Alright, so we've got uh, issue 42 of Suicide Squad, still going on with that one. Issue 20 of Batman Beyond, I'm still actually working through the, uh, the series before this one so can't wait to get to this one. Uh, looks like a new one, a prelude to the wedding. Uh, if you don't know, in Batman, he's getting married to Catwoman, and yeah, this looks like it's just the the before events before that happens. But uh, so we got a uh, issue one of Robin versus Ra's al Ghul. That should be a good read. Oh, this is a pretty cool cover. Issue two twenty five of the Punisher, and looks like you got a uh, Spider Man with Captain Marvel and Hawk, the Hawk. No, the Falcon. I think it is, yeah. I don't recognise his suit. <laughs> I think it's the Falcon, yeah. Uh, this is a, a weird one. I think this might be a variant. Uh, Hack and Slash Resurrection issue 7. I'm sure that was finished. Hang on, I'll just give it a quick read. So I got a sub box and I said to you know, the guy that anything Hack and Slash or Vampirella and Punisher and that whacking in my box. No, it's still, I thought it finished. Hang on. No, it looks like it's continuing on. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. Big fan of Cassie Hack. Yeah, like I said, I thought it finished issue six. I'm glad he slipped it in. <laughs> oh, my childhood. It's been a few months since they released an issue. Right, right, issue eight. This is a really fun series. I only read the first two, but it's really weird how they did it. So back when I was watching Rugrats, it, I mean, it was like in today's you know, world, and, you know, it was like, so we'll put it this way. So in this issue, it's if they're starting all over again. I don't think Dill's in it or um, uh, Kimmy, but it's like today's technology. There's drones, there's, you know, mobile phones. So what's happening is in the first issue, uh, Tommy and all that are thinking all these machines or animals in their world uh, watching them so then they alert their parents when they're up to something nothing good so you know back in the old days they could do anything they wanted and the parents wouldn't know whereas now they got technology you know baby cams drones watching them and I think there was a, a part of this issue with the drone it was like the watcher and it'd be in the sky and they're making sure they're not seeing them and yeah it's actually a really good read if you're a big Rugrats fan I recommend it Oh, uh, I think I've been miss Oh, unless it's been months since I released an issue. Uh, Big Trouble in Little China, Old Man Jack. So, I haven't started reading it. There was an, a series before that, and then I'm still reading e Escape from New York. Uh, yeah, it looks really cool. <laughs> Creepy cover. Uh, today, there was a lot of first issue comics that I thought I'd pick up and give it a go. Uh, I am familiar with Lady Death. I haven't watched the movie, but I watched bits of it years ago, and I thought it was alright, and just the character herself is really cool. So, The Unholy Ruin, issue one. Looks good. Uh, Hunt for Wolverine, the cause of a killer. That one looks like a good read. Alright, so we're reaching the part now where I just saw things that look really cool and give them a read. Uh, you've got Tap Dance, the greatest show in comics. I don't know, the cover, you know, this woman on here looked really cool. Okay. Oh crap, it's not issue one. Dang it, I wasn't looking properly. Uh, it's issue four or five, but uh, I'll still give it a read. Uh, Skybond. Yeah, I don't know too much about it. <laughs> I just thought it looks alright, I'll give it a go. Yeah, this one, I think it's definitely issue one. Just the cover really jumped out, I hope it's good. So, Portal Bound. Let's look at that cover, it looks really awesome. Now, I feel like this may be a movie. I'm not too sure. But uh, yeah, first issue again. We are the danger. Don't know what it's about. Just said, oh, I'll just give it a go, see how we are. Because I do, I, mean, I know there's reviews online, but I thought, I want to read it, judge it for myself. So, yeah, I hope it's good. And last but not least, I was really stoked I had this issue because I just started reading it and I needed the last issue. Reborn issue six. This really took me by surprise. I wasn't sure what it was about. I got the first issue months ago and the first couple of pages I thought, oh, uh, someone was dying and, oh, I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, the main character was dying of old age and I thought the cover, it may have been sort of like a polluted 
world and everyone's living in the slums. I thought, oh, is it another one? But no, reborn, it literally means reborn. So when you die, you are reborn into this sort of new world. And I'd say it's like a medieval with... Oh, I don't know, maybe Guardians of the Galaxy, I'd put it as a, them two together. And you become like warriors and there's like the devil and then there's... Uh, I don't know if there is a god or... I can't remember for the life of it, but uh, yeah, it is really good. I'm enjoying it. Six issues, so yeah. If you want to have a read of something that's sort of different, there you go. Okay, that's the comics done. I have got a few goodies today, so can't wait to get opening. To start it off, we've got a Nickelodeon Mini Figures. You know, collection. Apparently, they had it up for two hours and people just ran in and picked them all up. I think there was about four left and me and Luke grabbed two. So, oh, hang on, let's go through them. So you get Stimpy, Arnold, Rocco, Daggett, Catdog, Eliza, Ren, Tommy, Norbert, Chucky, Eliza, and... Oh, Nigel. <laughs> Give me Daggett. Come on, Daggett. Shoo. I got Nigel. <laughs> Look at him. He's funny looking. Brilliant. I'm happy with Nigel. Nigel's the bomb. Alrighty. I've actually got a booster box of this coming uh, uh, soon. So I'll be doing an unboxing video of that. You know, probably next week or so. But uh, I've got three booster packs of the Dark Saviors. I nearly missed this set. I didn't realise they brought new vampires in. So I thought as a warm up when I get the box, I'll buy three and open them. Uh, we're going to take this. That'll do. So you have Recon Scout for Hire. Oh, Vampire Vamp. I don't remember her being a hollow. Is, are you seeing that all right? The light's pretty bad. But you know who it is, Vampire Vamp. That's a good hollow. Uh, Horn of the Phantom Beast. Fandora the Flying Fortress. And Mayhem Fire. Foolish Burial Goods. That looks... I feel like I recognise that one. I think there's another card with a different style. Vampire Retainer. Quick Booster. <laughs> Kree Bandit. Oh, I got the cover card. Uh, Dambit Vampire Sheridan. Oh, that's pretty cool. Awesome. Oh, I like that the hollow only highlights certain parts. So like his robe. You now the gold strands, really cool. Wow, I can't believe I pulled the main cover card. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> we got Mirror Force. Good old Mirror Force. Remember when that was like really hard to get and rare? Seal stra Strategist Fur Hire. The Monarch Stormforth. Oh, that looks sick. Vampire Red Baron. Check that one out. Awesome. What does he do? Once per turn, you can pay a thousand life. Oh. Then target one monster your opponent controls and one other vampire monster you control. Switch control of those monsters. At the end of the battle phase, if this card has destroyed any monster by battle, you can special summon them from your graveyard to your field. Oh, I like him. And Vampire Desire. Now they got this one. I thought I've got to get him. He's awesome. Got Knuckles figure set. So you have the Knuckles you see today, and then classic Knuckles. And you also get a 35, 35, 32 page comic book, which I'll be excited to read. Love Knuckles. <laughs> Comics kind of beat up, so that's all right. Um, I'll give that one a read later. Cool, about time. That was a bit of effort. Now, Eddie, there we are. So you got Mini and Big. Mini will power you. <laughs> Alrighty, last but certainly not least. I was going to get this for my last Collector Zone unboxing, but they had it in stock, but they had already put it aside for someone, and I thought, oh, I missed out. But good thing with the guys at Collector Zone, they will do their best to order stuff for you, and yeah, they said no problem, we'll get it in. Oh, you know what? I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I'll make this quick. Uh, when I first started YouTube, I wanted to be the sort of person who 
always wear a mask. Uh, at the beginning, I mean, it was a bit of a cheap way of doing one. I took Kane's 03 mask, slapped a skull jaw on it, and thought, yeah, they didn't really like it, so I moved on and bought Casey Jones' mask. Uh, this is only someone that made it themselves, but you may have noticed in a video I did many, many years ago, it was when a reaction to The Legend of Korra, I was wearing this mask, uh, I was drawing pictures with this mask, but it, I mean, the guy did a good job, but it's not the, yeah, you know, there's a lot of marks that are sort of sharp and it's a little bit uncomfortable, so I couldn't really wear it and the straps were very, you know, heavy, but it was always cool to have because it was sort of like a gimmick for me. I was always wearing the Casey Joan mask and then I moved on to like Scorpion and all that stuff, but I always loved Casey Jones one and just unfortunately they never made a a replica of his one from you know from ever. I mean I know there's like toy ones but I wanted this one. And that being said Oh that was a fail. They finally released a proper replica mask that Casey Jones uses in the first Ninja Turtles movie. I saw it on the Facebook page of my comic shop and I was like, oh, I need it. And here we are. I finally have a proper replica. But I'm not going to get rid of this one. This is history for me. So what I'll do. Oh, it's just started raining. Oh, it was like epic rain, like thunderstorm coming in. You know, I'll keep this one and display this one next to it. But yeah, enough holding on. Let's crack it open. Oh, it is perfect. It's like proper... See, this one is like, um, uh, how would I put it? Like a clay sort of, you know, s s material, whatever you call it. This is like a plastic, which is like a like a proper hockey mask. But check that out. That is awesome. And, uh, yeah, another thing with that one, it was like leather strap, and it was quite irritating. But um, it's proper sort of cotton or, you know, strap. Wow, it is really pouring out there. Uh, let's get it on. That fits nicely. Oh, I checked that out. I want to see if I can see. That is awesome. Ooh, my hair's a mess. <laughs> That's why I wear a hat. Uh, that is really good. It's nice and light and it's not irritating. That is cool. Oh, can I get my hat on? No, the hat won't go on, but that's all right. This is a cool mask. I love it. So yeah, that's Casey Jones replica mask. I'm so happy that they finally released an actually official you know, mask for him and oh, I just can't <laughs> explain how much I really am glad to finally have it. Oh, let's get them both in. You know, it's history. So there we go. Pretty cool. It's like the battle of the century, you know, mask versus mask. Who will win? And as an end to this video, oh, I think I had a lot of fun with this one. I had a few comics, like, you know, cards and pulled out some good rares. Uh, Nickelodeon, you know, my old childhood. And a bit of history of, you know, my mask for my YouTube channel. And, yeah, I just had a lot of fun in this one. And, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed as well. So, I tell you what, won't hold us up any longer. I'll see you all later.